Hi folks, welcome to my shop. I want to introduce you to a new plane, the small chisel plane. Now this is not something that I use a whole lot, but when you do have a need for it, it's indispensable. And I'll show you the most common example of when I use that. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe Turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. When you build a drawer, you have a groove that's cut on both sides and on the front. And your drawer bottom slides over the drawer back into the groove, gets locked in place. Sometimes when you assemble it, for whatever reason, something was off, the drawer bottom and the drawer back ends up being a little too high and it's in the way of this groove. Well, you can take your block plane and in a creative manner you can remove some of this material but you're limited in the, how close you can go. Even if you're using something like a small squirrel tail, you still can't get all the way in there. Now you have the option of taking a chisel and balancing that to try to get in there or you can use a small chisel plane set up properly Set it on that reference surface that's already been done and then just move forward into there and finish the cut. Now the problems or the limitations are that you have no support for the wood fiber out ahead of the blade. So if the grain changes direction you're in trouble because it's going to dig down in. And it's a bit of a bear to set up because it literally needs to be parallel to the sole and it takes a little bit of finessing in order to get that. The nice plane actually. It's it's a cast stainless steel body, so rust is the one thing you won't have to worry about. Now I'm just going to wipe the, uh, the packing grease or whatever it is that they use. It uh, gets really sticky and it's best, I find it easier to get off with the solvent than just trying to wipe it off. I'll get this cap screw out of the way. I'm just using paint thinner and a rag. That would be dusty paint thinner. Only on the outside. It's a nice thick blade. That thing looks to be 3 16 of an inch thick. So big wide primary bevel makes it really easy to or makes it easier to sharpen freehand. It is a short blade, so it's a little tricky in trying to hold on to it. Funny they pack these ones in oil, because they wouldn't rust anyway. I guess old habits are hard to break. And that's, the machining on that is really nice. That's, I'm, I'm quite impressed with this. Just clean the lever cap, or what we would call lever cap, a little non-traditional, and that's nice and thick too. Nice knurling, it's really a well-made plane. It has a bigger brother, which is quite a bit longer, and I've never bought that one. I always felt that the small one would do everything the big one can do, but the big one can't get into the small places that the small one can. And that is, I'm going to apply a back bevel. So I'll start off by coming in and polishing or uh, flattening my 16,000 grit. My stones get dirty sitting here on the end of my bench every time we wipe the bench off. It all lands down here. Okay. I'm using a steel rule, the same steel rule I use all the time, so I never switch it around. Set that on the edge of the uh, of the thousand grit. Lay that down so that you're working on the opposite quarter inch edge, and just run that forward and back. Try to keep within a quarter of an inch of that opposite edge, and you don't alter the angle of the back bevel. And this is less than one degree, so it's not like it's going to change any geometry on the cut that you would notice. I'm 
Now let's flip this over and see what we got. And we've got a polished strip running all the way across so it's nice and flat, really flat. But I'm going to go just a little bit more. The reason is that there are grinding scratches from the factory that run all the way to the edge. And one of the uh, big advantages of this Charlesworth ruler trick is that instead of having to remove all of those grinding scratches from the entire surface, which is what we used to do, because we would lay the blade like so and literally work the entire surface, even though the only part we were concerned about was right out there at the edge. Now by sit elevating it on that little steel rule, we're able to cut down below those grinding scratches just in the area that we need, which is at the cutting edge, and hence remove or reduce our preparation time dramatically. But I want to make sure that I've cut down deep enough to get rid of any of those grinding scratches that would otherwise carry right out to the end of the edge of the blade and leave you with a serrated edge and somewhat of a rough surface. You can also use this plane for flushing off um, wood plugs. I use mine a, a lot of times for removing glue when you're gluing up a wide panel and you've got a bead of glue. I just use it on, I, I hold it on a, an angle and skew it and it just does a nice job of cutting it off. It's a lot easier and it saves a lot of time than trying to plane them off. And I don't like to use a scraper because I find that the scraper often pulls the glue and pulls wood fiber with it as well. Now after doing the, uh, the 1000, I'm going to jump over here to the 16. And you could put an in-between stone in here, but the surface area is small enough that I think I can go right to the 16 with just a minimum amount of extra effort. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber-only content, discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. All right, let's take a look at that. Okay, that shows up as nice and polished if you get the light just right. So, with that done, now we'll go ahead and sharpen it. Set that on the primary bevel, that main 25 degree bevel. We're going to elevate it just a few degrees. Nice light pressure, barely enough to squish a firm grape. Do that until we can detect a burr that runs corner to corner. Then we'll jump over here to the 16,000. Repeat the same procedure. Try to get as many fingers out there in the cutting edge as you can. And I always try to tie these two hands together, even though this is a small blade to hold on to. I'm squeezing my right thumb with my left hand so that they work together. Rest on my primary. Raise up a little bit higher than I did on that previous stone, creating what we would call a tertiary bevel. You may only need to sharpen this thing once or twice a couple of years for how little it gets used. Or I shouldn't say that it doesn't get used, but the amount that you would use it when you do use it is pretty limited. Now my final step is to go in and just polish off whatever might be left of that burr. Okay. Now the blade isn't stainless, so you want to make sure that it's it's uh, good and dry before you put it back together. I've had several of my planes get rust because I allowed a bit of moisture to remain on there and you put it back together and then you've got moisture trapped in between two pieces of metal and the next thing you know you've got. These edges are really sharp. So just, just to make it a little bit easier on the hand, I'm gonna go in here and just break that. I'm filing away from the sole. I'm just going to, actually I'm going to more of a radius, so I'll start here and then change the angle, and then change the angle a third time. It just makes it a little more comfortable in your hand, and a little less prone to getting a, a ding on it when you bump into something metal, that would end up leaving a raised bump on the bottom. So one angle, and then a different angle, and then a third angle. Let me go do that outside edge as well. I'm just going to chamfer this a little bit too. Okay. 
and that those edges are quite sharp. And I'm planning. I'm, I'm filing away from the bedding surface on this one. I, plan, I filed away from the sole on this on the sole, and I'm filing away from the frog surface or the bedding surface of the blade, so there's not a burr on the top side. I just planed that earlier, so I know it's flat. So I'll set that on. Put the cap screw back in. You got to be patient with this because it takes it takes a bit to get it just right. I may as well put that down in as far as it'll go, or almost as far as it'll go. We don't need a actually you only you only need enough here so that you can get this off because that screw sits into a little deeper countersink. Should have tightened that down a little bit more. Almost ran out of travel on that lever cap screw. Okay, now I've got my wax somewhere. Put a little wax on the sole. Now let's straighten this out. I'm just going to kind of let gravity do its thing. So I want to have it snug enough that it lays against that surface and then just move that forward and snug it up. No, that's too, that's, uh, not taking too much of a bite. That's no bite. I can see the blade above the Hey, can you? Yeah. Actually, what I want is I want to surface it a little bit flatter. So I can do the whole width. Instead of doing that, I'll test it on this. Okay, get it parallel to the sides. Doing yeah, I'm, I loosened the uh, the lever cap. That's just about it, right there. Just drop the blade down a little. Just time. enough. I almost have to push down on the front of the plane in order to get it to bite, but it'll just pick up a very very light shaving, so I can go in there. Now, if I had to go in and finish where my block plane stopped, I could set that on there and just move that forward. Now, I don't want to do this because this that, there isn't a problem here, and I don't want to create one. But I could pick it up from there and just go forward. And what you may need to do is you may need to push down here. You may need to push down back here, depending on how much you want it to dig in. Let me just uh, let me flip this over and try it on this clean surface one more time and see. Okay, so that's about that's about the maximum I'd want to take off with this. And again, if you end up going against the grain, you're going to have a problem where it's going to dig in because there is nothing ahead of that blade to support. The wood fiber when it wants to lift and tear it's going to so that's your small chisel plane um, I wouldn't have it as, uh, in my top three or four purchases but I would certainly want it within my top ten and as I said there are times when it becomes indispensable all right good luck if you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level I've always said better tools make the job so much easier if you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.